I am a professional. Actually, let's review both of these. My babies. These are my babies. Well, this is my baby and this is an imposter. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> So we're dealing with the Roloflex 6008 here and Roloflex 6001. Uh, difference between these, this has an internal light meter, um, which also means uh, the ground glass is darker on this one than my Roloflex, which is easily one whole stop brighter. If you put a brighter screen in here, you have to get rid of the meter, which makes it worthless. That's the whole point you got this, right? The other cool thing with this one is on the side, there's this like grip, so you can hold it like this, which is kind of cool, but there's also a pistol grip that goes on the bottom of either one of these that plugs into the side, which I, I love, because it looks like you're like, here, actually, let's pause. Tell me that's not cool. it looks like a Super 8 camera, right? So if you don't want to use that, and it's cool, like it's not going to fall off, like it is on there, right? So I don't, I have no qualms of carrying it like this. The only thing is, is that, but there is this little lock on the side, so now I can't shoot it. So these lenses are incredible. They're all Schneider, AKA Zeiss. The 80 is a 2.8. Uh, I only have two lenses. Well. I say I only have two lenses, but look, John Canlis is lying. He has a third lens. Uh, I never use it. This is my 120 millimeter F4 macro lens that allows me to focus to like six inches. Thought I'd use it. I don't. But I tell you what I do use all the time is the 80, and I also use the 50. With the 80, actually with any of these lenses, they come in two versions. There's the PQ and the PQS. The PQS lenses will allow you to shoot flash and sync at one one thousandth of a second. If you use a PQ lens and shoot one thousandth of a second, it will not work with flash. Everything is pretty auto. Like when you take a picture, it automatically winds the film. So why am I using this instead of a twin lens reflex? handful of reasons. I love these little one third clicks in between the shutter speeds. That's cool. I also love the one third clicks on my f-stops on all my lenses. I also love the fact that I'm not stuck with just an 80. I do have a nine millimeter um, extension tube for anything closer than three feet on my 80. I would never use the plus one, which again, nine millimeter extension tube on my 50 because this thing focuses down to, oh, 0.5 meters. So what is that, one and a half feet? I don't need to get closer than that on a wide angle lens. But this only goes to three feet, so I use that nine millimeter. Um, loading is super easy. Like, this is how you uh, load. It has to come up, this thing pops out, and then you have this really cool I hate my life right now. I am a professional. So this is a 6001. It loads the exact same way as a 6008, 6006, 6003. Uh, as you can see, it says magazine change, film insert remove. So to, once you're done, right, you're gonna push this up, okay? You can, what this does is this uh, closes the dark slide inside. So like, they're like this, right? If I take it off, now the film is like this. But there we go. So I don't ever really take the back off. I just open this back. So when I'm ready to change my film, I'm gonna push this up like this and then push these two red buttons, which kind of just opens it up, okay? And here it's showing you a thick and a thin. So what we're gonna do is take this out. If you have not done this and you open this, taking this out is hard. So 
So let me just show you, right? I'm gonna put this back in here, insert this insert by just kind of playing it in there. But let's say it was to here and I open it, it like is stuck here for some reason. I don't know why, I don't know what the reason is, but you can't get it out. So follow the instructions and push it up, okay? So now we've got the back open, we have the insert, this guy. Um, it's pretty simple. You've got, you, you just kind of pull up right here to kind of put the film in. It doesn't matter which side the film goes in. You can have a taking spool on this side or that side, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's load up some XP2, which is what I shoot in this camera. So I line this guy up here and then kind of pull up on this and let that get in there and then push it in. Make sure it's all the way in and not like that. That's gonna mess up your camera. It's not really in, it's not in there. So move that till it taps, right? Pull your paper off, right? If there's stuff like that, I try to make sure that it comes off because sometimes it'll get stuck in the camera. Put this through the thing, right there. Twist it around, there we go, it's caught. Now it's not gonna go anywhere. And then advance this. See this line? That's not a problem. Some people are like, well, what happened? Is this film old? No, this film's fresh. It just is what's exposed to the sun and what's not. I don't know, it's weird. Because it freaked me out the first time I saw that line. You know, I was like, oh, this film's old. Nope, it's, that's the way it works. So I just advance this until I get that line in the middle, which lines up with that white arrow, which is also on either side. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm gonna open this back up. And again, you see how there's this thick part and the thin part. The thick part means it goes here. Like I wouldn't put the thick part at the top. It's gonna go at the bottom. So the film goes here. And now look, it lines up with what the drawing says. The film goes with the thick one. The taking spool lines up there. I just kind of hold it in and look, you can kind of see it's loose. Right? So that's fine. It doesn't matter that it's loose. Close it, push this down. I'm gonna turn my camera on. It's already on S. That's the one that, that's the mode that I turn it on. Sorry, you heard that noise? I was hitting the uh, depth of field pivot right there. So now I'm just click it. Boom. And now it's on frame number one. We're good to go. Um, it's heavy. And here's a big downfall are these batteries. So this battery was sent to, I'm gonna have to get you that information. There's a dude in Colorado. I pay, I think it's like $185 to change this battery from going lasting about eight rolls to about 80 rolls on one charge. So this is highly recommended. I don't know what his name is. I have to look up in my emails, but um, it'll give you this. The only downfall I guess to this is I've got to buy a specific charger for it. And that charger was like $250. But without this, like if you're going with the regular battery, this is not really a functional camera, especially if you live in Utah, because as it gets colder, it doesn't last very long. But with this battery, I don't care how cold it is, it'll last for at least 50 rolls. Best case when it's warm, like 80. The other thing that happens every once in a while on this side, there's SE, which is single exposure. And then you turn that up and it goes to ME, which is multiple exposure. It sounds different. So today at my shoot, when I was shooting environmental portraits of uh, team members, it advanced and it sounded weird. I was like, what the heck? So I looked. There's another thing on this side, the, the flash meter. So I'm gonna set this to one thousandth of a second. That doesn't sound like a thousandth of a second, does it? But it'll, it'll, it, it makes that noise when it's on the flash meter. But if I turn it off, weird, right? So, you know, just you get to know your cameras and when they sound weird, it sounds weird. And this to me already sounds weird. Like if I had film in here and it sounded like this, that's not right. I really love that this is like the dark slide. There is no dark slide, the dark slide is this. And you push it down, you can't take the back off, but when it's up like this, you can take the whole back off, right? So if you want interchangeable backs, I don't ever 
fuck around with different backs. It is so sharp. These lenses are incredible. Like you shoot them wide open and they're just tack sharp. I can shoot 2.8 on this and I know it's tack sharp. If I stop down to f4, it's almost digital. It's too sharp, right? I shoot at f8, it's crispy. Everything is just, oh, why look at the, the mulch on the ground and the intricate details of said mulch and caterpillars. Um, the screen is pretty bright. Focusing is pretty easy. It's not the fastest, I will tell you that. Um, my normal 80 actually has this little grip on the side, like this. Take this lens off, the little red button on the side. Put this bad boy on. And I have this for like quick focusing, because otherwise it's like, I just like this so I can move really quickly, you know? Yeah, easy, right there, boom. Why would you get the 6008 over the 6001? You want an internal meter. That's the main reason. And the 6008s are like the, the Bugatti, right? This is more of like a Honda Civic, reliable, a little bit less expensive, but it uh, gets the fucking job done. Um, you put your hot shoe stuff here. So like with a pocket wizard, it's weird because it comes out this way, um, but it works. I don't use a prism on this. This isn't a camera that I'm gonna go like this to. It's weird. I like it down. So my waist level is fine with me. But again, remember with the waist level finder, everything is flipped backwards. So what I see and I get the photos back, I'm like, weird. There you go. Why would you not get one of these? Because you're stupid. Everyone should have one of these. They're cheap. They're like 1500 bucks, maybe 15 to $2,000. Uh, and a Hasselblad would set you back with the lens and like you have a dark slide. It's harder to load. These are really easy to load. Again, downfalls the battery, but send it to that guy for, you know, set you back two, $300 for everything. Then you got a camera that's gonna work indefinitely. And it's great. And it's the Zeiss Schneider lenses. Okay, 15 and 80, that's all you need. And a nine millimeter extension tube. And don't open the back when there's fucking film inside.